Good morning. Welcome to all this morning. Now, we've had this video queued up for like four weeks now, and I keep forgetting because it's at the end of the announcements. So we're going to start with this video. These are the clips of, from the clips that they showed us at the Synod Assembly. This is where our support of our Synod is used because it doesn't just go down and pay for an office building and a staff in Tampa. So, Larry, if you would bring this one up. My name is Paula Edwards, and this is Pastor Carrie Niedermeyer. We are the co-chairs of the Just Love Ministry for the Florida Bahamas Senate. Our mission, plain and simple, is to see love established in public, which creates justice for all. Just love. Just love was convened by the bishop in the winter of 2021, and one of our first tasks was to pull together the results from a survey the Senate had done around racial justice. To our surprise, really to the whole team's surprise, only about 5% of respondents from the Florida Bahamas Synod saw justice work as a part of their faith journey. So one of our main tasks as a team has been to help congregations, leaders, and church members to understand how justice work flows naturally from the love and grace that we first received from God. The prophet Micah reminded the Israelites so long ago that God had told them what was good, to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God. And Jesus chastised the leaders of his day, he even called them hypocrites, because they did things like tie seasonings and spices, but they neglected the weightier matters of the law, like justice and mercy and faith. So just love helps people see that justice work is integral to their faith journey, and we teach people how to do justice so they can do it as God intends. Paula, why don't you tell us a little bit about how we do that? Sure. During Lent and Advent, we provide materials that you can use in your congregation or an individual can use for Bible study or the entire church programming. During Black History Month and Juneteenth, we host celebrations and materials that you can use. Um, we also offer advocacy days and opportunities, and we have uh, training for our ambassadors to bring justice work to your congregations and conferences. Here's a little secret. Justice work is hard, but it is also full of joy and community and fun. Check out Nativity Lutheran's experience with Harmonies of Heritage and materials Just Love developed for Black History Month. If you are interested in learning more about how justice is a part of your faith journey, or if you'd like to be equipped to do justice, please join our mailing list. Or, better yet, join us for our retreat at Luther Springs in June. We'd love to see you there and train you how to do justice work in your conference, in your congregation, and in your community. President of the Church Council, I have some great news. 
we continue to grow as a church. While many churches have not bounced back from COVID, we have. We have on average in the summer months, 50 to 60 members here, 60 to 80 members in the winter, and between 30 and 80 members online. Financially, up until recently, we have had our income running ahead of expenses, and that's what I wanted to mention here this morning. We've had some significant expenses that go along with having a 50-year-old church. To that end, we're starting a campaign <coughs> excuse me, to uh, raise some money to make some repairs and one improvement. So far this year, we have had $7,100 for an air conditioning replacement. That's why it's nice and cool out in the narthex now. Plus $800 for a roof repair. As a result, like I said, you can see the new ceiling tiles. We've got that all caught up, and so we're, it's not a hot spot there anymore. <laughs> we're looking at $1,000 for a hot water repair in Kyle Hall. That price started at $13,000. But through what Pastor refers to as value engineering, and I call shrewd negotiation, we got it down to $6,000 and then down to less than $1,000 to take care of everything that's needed. Kudos to Pastor on that one. The hot water heater in Kyle Hall is a can that was kicked down the road for about 20 years. No one actually remembers when the huge hot water heater actually worked last. So we have to take care of that problem. The improvement that we're making is $2,600 for a video surveillance system on the exterior uh, backside along here and the side and then on the interior of Kyle Hall. Kyle Hall has been broken into, as have several churches in the area. You'll remember last year, last time I spoke to you folks about money, we were looking at a sign and came up with a rough cost, and I came before you and I asked for help. However, when we dug into it, being on a state, county, and federal highway is very expensive. We estimated at that time that the sign would be $100,000 which is why you don't see a new sign. That's assuming we could get all the permits. Now, many of you donated, including myself, and you are entitled to have those funds returned or switched over to the need that I'm currently discussing. We are asking for $11,500 as a special fundraising effort, and I'm asking you and we're asking you for your help in this regard. Since I was raised on a small farm outside of Cleveland where you put your money where your mouth is, I'm going to start with the $100 donation and the $400 that I donated for the sign to be converted over to this use. Thank you for your help, and I love using this phrase. I'm surprised you let me use it. Let's make the church great again. The church has always been great. And along with, as I've said, there is no such thing as a poor church. We are the recipients and the dispersers of the good news about Jesus Christ. How can we be poor? But we can certainly, and the church today is certainly in many places, financially challenged. But as we are financially challenged in our homes, so are we are financially challenged here. But it's by coming together that we see miracles. So any guests with us for the first time today that want to identify themselves? Because we have a pamphlet. There's one right here waving. Uh, we have a pamphlet that says who we are and what we do. Uh, and it's wonderful to have you here. We're still looking always for volunteers for not only the church guild, but to usher and to read. And if you're interested, you can see me or you can see Jeff, um, and we will take care, take care of making sure you're hooked up with the right people. Um, we're also looking for choir people, always. Look at that choir. There's, there's 12 people up there. But always welcome more voices. Um, so rehearsals are Sunday at 8.30 currently. Um, any other announcements? Uh, see your insert. This week... Tuesday is quilting. Wednesday at 1 in the afternoon, 
Linda is going to be gathering some volunteers and they're going to be loading up the backpacks. If you noticed all those school supplies in the back, we'll get to more of that, that later. But Wednesday at one o'clock, they'll be taking care of that. Friday is a pop music dance in Kyle Hall. Saturday is a music jam at one o'clock in Kyle Hall. And next Sunday, we will be celebrating Blessing the Backpacks. We will be giving away these backpacks. Um, continuing to update our membership directory. Um, if you haven't had your photo taken yet, please do. If you haven't filled out the form, please do. We're trying to get very important um, that this is done. Um, one other, and I have one other announcement. If anyone in this congregation has a relatively heavy-duty hammer drill, and if you know what that is, if you don't know what it is, I don't have to explain it to you. I do not have one anymore. We want to get thresholds put down at these two doors to cover those things. My heavy-duty hammer drill I lent to my nephew. It was already 38 years old, and he brought it to an end of its life. And <laughs> that's all right. I have a lightweight one, but it's on a cordless, and it's not going to drill the amount of holes we need. So if you have something that's really heavy duty, let me know, because we want to get that taken care of, because I'm tired of seeing green tape. Um, are there any other announcements here? Well, then, did you wave your hand there, Chris? Yes. yes. Good morning. Just to add on to Pastor's announcements for the dance on Friday, our extra special will be sausage, peppers, and onions for those of you that are coming. And bring a friend. Come dance and have some food and fellowship. Thank you. Amen. Any others? Then I invite those of you who are able to stand and let us begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in this world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. And through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, you are forgiven, and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. And here we are together to worship.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join me in praying the prayer of the day. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace. From 2 Kings. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing food from the first fruits to Elisha, the man of God. Twenty loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, Give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, How can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, Give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat and have some left. He said it before them, and they ate and had some left, according to the Lord, the word of the Lord. Let us read responsively Psalm 145. All your works shall praise you, O Lord. And your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall tell of the glory of your kingdom. That all people may know your power. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord. You open wide your hand. You are righteous in all your ways. You are near to all who call upon you. A reading from Ephesians. For this reason, I know I, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power from his Holy Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is in the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Glory be to you, Lord. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festivals of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we going to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who were eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew to the mountain by himself. When the evening came, his disciples went down to the sea got into a boat and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not come to them. The sea became rough, and a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately boat, the boat reached land toward where they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Christ. Please be seated. I saw a few children out there. If you'd like to come forward and help me start this sermon off, I'd really appreciate it. Good morning. How are you? And what's your name? Anakin? Okay. And one of you wears the necklace. Okay, you're wearing the necklace. That makes you Maria? Oh, but you're Maria? Was that a good? Okay, that must make you Lily. I said last week she had to paint her nose red, but she says, I have a necklace. Now she takes the necklace. So if you look around, do you see a picture that we talked about this morning? In all these fancy windows, do you see one? That one there, what do you see? Fish and bread. But we see, there's too many fish. There's one, two, three, four, five fish. So that must mean the miracle's already started, right? It's already started to multiply. But the important thing that I want to bring out, how did they get the five loaves of barley and the four, two fish that they had to start with? Where did they come from? A little boy, a child, like you, brought together. We don't know where, whether his mother sent off here, give this to them, or whether he came specially to bring them. But it's really in that one small act started the ball rolling in this whole miracle. Isn't that wonderful to know that even the little things that we do can start the ball rolling to a whole miracle? Let us pray. Lord God. We thank you for all the miracles in our life, those we see and recognize, but also those that we fail to recognize. And we ask that you help us to recognize when especially a young one brings brings up that start of a new miracle. We pray all this trusting and hoping in your Son, our Lord and Savior, and let all the people say, 
Amen. And guess what? Since you come up, you, everybody gets to help themselves to one thing out of the basket. Help yourself and thank you. Ah. <sighs> Nick Foles. Anybody know who Nick Foles is? Oh, yeah, Philly fans here. Nick Foles. Nick Foles was the quarterback when the, Philly, the Eagles won the what's it, Super Bowl in 2016. Now, Nick Foles is an interesting story. And the reason he kind of inspired me, because I saw these memes online that, you know, they showed a picture of Nick Foles and there was a precursor, something about um, we've lost our starting quarterback and our second string quarterback and we got to rely on this guy. And Nick Foles says, I got this. Nick Foles was never for any particular season with any team he was with the starting quarterback. He was a second or third string quarterback. He spent more of his season riding the bench than he did actually out on the field playing. Statistically, his numbers were not as good as the starting quarterbacks of the teams he played on, so he was always playing second and third string. But, and as I was reading about this this week, getting myself familiarized, because as many of you know, I'm not a big sports fan. Now, coming from the Philadelphia area, I kind of keep an eye on the teams that I grew up with watching. And I do know, by the way, that the Phillies are having one of their best seasons and they actually have the current best record in Major League Baseball. But that's as far as I go. I, don't, I haven't watched the game for years. I don't follow sports. But I did know, I saw these things about Nick Foles saying, I got this. And that inspired, I got this. I mean, the one account that I read said, basically, he is the best quarterback the Eagles ever had. Now, that does mean there was other names mentioned, Donovan McNabb and um, Randall Cunningham that were statistically better quarterbacks. They had better records, more pass completions, more large rushing, or whatever. how would they do that? But Nick Foles, in a crunch, when the pressure was on, came through for them. I got this. What wonderful words to hear when we are in a situation where we don't know what to do. We go to a professional, whether it's a doctor or a lawyer, and they review our case with us and say, don't worry, I got this. We have a tradesperson come into our home because we have an issue with our plumbing or our electrical work or our heating, and they say, I got this. Those words of comfort those words of assurance. Don't worry, I've got this. In our story this morning, the fourth telling of the miracle of multiplication. It has a different set of details. Jesus says to Philip, hey, let's feed these people. And what's the first thing Philip worries about? We just talked about this money. What is it? Where's the money? How are we going to afford six months' wages would not buy enough to get but each person a little bit? Jesus knew what he was going to do. I got this. Andrew and Peter spoke up. Well, this boy has brought us, well, basically, just basically enough for them, just enough for the disciples, just enough so they would have a meal. Because if you think about it, five loaves of bread, which would be about that big, and two fish, and the fish were probably about yay big, would f probably feed that inner circle, that 12 and Jesus, enough that they'd have not a feast, but a decent meal. But Jesus says, I got this. Just start giving the food out. And as it is recorded, everyone ate their fill, and then Jesus said, gather up the leftovers. And there were 12 baskets left over. 12 is an important number. 12 is that one of those numbers of completion. 
12 is representing God acting among God's people because 12 was the number of sons of Jacob that went on to form what became the tribe of Israel. And 12 appears regularly through the Old Testament as a number that this is a holy time recognized when they say 12, something important has gone on. 12 bags of fragrance, fragrance, uh, fragments of this meal. 12 baskets full. Now, it does say that the people saw this happen, but of the 5,000, how many really knew what had started this? How many just ate their fill and moved on, happy to get a meal? In fact, as John continues, the people follow Jesus, and Jesus says, you're only following me because you got a free meal. Okay? How many did not recognize the importance of what went on in that moment? But those close, those in relationship with Jesus, those being looking to be in a relationship with God, all recognized the miracle, and they wanted to make Jesus haul him up and make him king, and that's not what Jesus wanted. Jesus was not there to become the ruler. So off they went, and they go out to sea, and the wind is against them, and they have to row. And I don't know if you've ever been on a boat where you have to row against the wind. It is painful and slow and draining. And when they were three to five, four four miles out, and if anybody's been on the Sea of Galilee, it is a big, big lake. Um, They saw Jesus walking on the water. And what did he say to them? Do not be afraid. In many churches, as we talk today, they are struggling. That is the story of Christianity in this part of the world right now. It is struggling. It is struggling. We look out around the audience here, around the congregation, and we see more older people than we see younger people. Okay? And this is what's going to happen to the church. We, we're, we're, we're struggling with numbers in worship. We're struggling with finances. And we are struggling in our lives. But yet the church is mirroring the struggles of culture. We feel like we're rowing against the wind. So the first words we need to hear are do not be afraid. And the second thing we need to hear is now go out and spread the good news. Now, if you don't really comprehend how miracles work, let me point out how we've done it and we're doing it for a second time here. I stood up before this congregation, oh, about a month and a half ago. I held up one empty backpack and I said, hey, we did this last year. Let's do it again. Let's clather. And somehow we said, we've got this. We've got this. And as you leave, check the pile of supplies out in the narthex, the composition books, the packs of pencils and pens and crayons, the notebooks and the filler paper to go with them, the spiral bound notebooks, and the backpacks. How many backpacks did we have at the last count, Linda? Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guarantee you we have more than 12 containers full of supplies that will be distributed next week, and then what is here left after we've driven it to the, given it to the kids who come there will be that much to go into schools to help to say, you know what, we support education. We got this. We. With what Angel brought in on Wednesday, I'd say we have 50 to 60. 50 to 60 backpacks. Our goal was 30. 50 to 60. See, in today's world, As a church, we are called to be Christ to the world. It is our mission when we hear about shortages, when we hear about injustice, when we hear about needs in the world, we as a people are supposed to supply or, or reply, we got this. And it's each little bit, that five loaves of bread 
And those two fish were not a lot, but it was the start. And we even from off times lack, from shortage, what we can supply, the miracle of multiplication happens. It happens daily through this world when people step out in faith. Step out in faith. And why can we step out in faith? Well, folks, that's the gospel. Because as broken as humanity is, as sinful as we all basically are, and that's really the core of it, we are broken, sinful people. At our root, we need the grace and forgiveness of God. None of us lives a life worthy of salvation. But when that time came that someone needed to step forward for all of us, Jesus said on that cross, I got this. Amen.
In Christ, you have heard the word of faith, the gospel of salvation. Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator in heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again, he ascended to heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. be seated. As we've been doing here now, we form our prayers into prayers of thanksgiving, which we call joys, or prayers of petition, requests, which we call concerns. So let's start out with joys. Do we have any thanks to God to give for this peace week? And I see a my hand up. Huh? Well, I might, dra I might draft a young man who's sitting with you to walk around with the mic. Yeah, you'll do that. Okay. We're sitting there happy that our grandson, Anakin, is spending a couple of weeks with us. Do you want to help the pastor take the microphone around to people? Okay. You just, where you see a hand, you take the mic to him. Let's welcome again, Anakin. I want to thank everybody for the prayers for their mama. She's home. She's wearing a heart monitor, but she's back to work, and Amen. everything is going well. Amen. Also, let's all pray for our athletes over in Paris, that they stay safe. And it doesn't matter if they win, they try. Amen. Other joys. It seems that the world is a little bit of a happier place now, and for that, I'm very happy. Amen. Roger and I became great grandparents this week with a little boy named Aww. Percy. <laughs> Amen. Where is Percy at? Illinois, okay. Up here. I have my last baby boy, who's actually 38, but he's single, so he's still my baby, moving down from Las Vegas to live with me. And he said he would come to church with me. So. Amen. And his name? Jared. Jeremy, yeah, 38. That'll lower our main age down here a few years. <laughs> Any other joys that we wish to share? I have one. You have one? He has a mic, though. That's right, I got a mic. Anyway, uh, 
this was back last year. Uh, I was asking for prayers for my neighbor's daughter uh, who was having difficulties with her uh, pregnancy. And uh, previous to that, she had lost, uh, uh, I think, two other babies uh, from uh, miscarriages. So anyway, so I, I just felt motivated to get everybody to pray for this new pregnancy coming up. And there was slow growth. They weren't sure everything was going to happen. But, you know, this is, this is God's mighty healing power that, um, that she was okay. She, we, seen, we witnessed her yesterday. Uh, Chris was holding her in her hands. And uh, she's 14 weeks old and healthy and strong as could be. So the miracle, what's her name? Uh, Rihanna Ray. Rihanna Ray. The miracle of Rihanna Ray and the power of prayer. And this is our Healing Prayer Sunday, even though our prayer team is down to one this week because Christine, I know she was going up to Citra. And Elaine, I'm not sure where she is today. So as you receive communion, if you want prayers for healing, Carl will be stationed right over here. And, and it's, not, it's not me. It's, it's I just... The Lord you're the conduit. You're the conduit. So, but this is God what we're, uses me. we're told to delay on hands and prayer in trust and hope and faith. Amen. And that's, it's the prayer and the pray, but it's really the Holy Spirit. Other joys that we want to share. The one up here, this is a big joy. I really thank everybody for praying um, for the sale of my house up north. Uh, it's on the market. And yesterday I found out that 20 groups came through during open house. So that was really wonderful. And we've had 11 showings. Um, and just ask for your continued prayer as we're rejoicing uh, that everything's working out smoothly. Uh, this Tuesday is when all the bids come in. So we're just trusting for uh, a very high price on the house. <laughs> uh, and just uh, thank you so much for all your prayers. And it's nice to be back here with you. Uh, and are you planning to come back and be our leader next week? I'll be here uh, starting next week and then off for one week because I'm going north for a family reunion. And then I'll be back on the 18th steadily. And that's a big joy yeah. for all of us here. <laughs> Amen. And Larry, you do a great job with the recordings, but it's always wonderful to have live music, live people, table respond and to um, take audibles. Oh, by the way, let's sing this song. So, other joys. How about concerns? Stuff that we, people, things that we're praying for right now? Yes, um, I just found out my 94-year-old brother had a stroke and he was moved from intensive care to hospice the other day. Um, I would like prayers for um, for his family, for his wife, and his daughter and a granddaughter. Thank you. Amen. And your brother's name? Irvin. Irvin. Okay. Over here. I like some prayers from my sister Lorraine, who's 72, and she's dying of an unexpected breathing disease. And because she's in a religion that she's not allowed to talk to me, I don't even get to say goodbye to her. But I still would like prayers for her. It's going to be any day now. Okay. And the name again? Lorraine. Lorraine. Other concerns that we want to lift up? I'd like to say prayers for Joseph uh, Faulkner. Uh, he passed last week. He was our chaplain for the VVA, the Vietnam Veterans of America. Amen. I'd like to ask for prayers for my sister Lorraine's daughter, Sherry. She had to go to Jacksonville because Sherry had two minor strokes. She's got two kids, and Lorraine's been there helping her for the past week and a half. She's coming back, I think, this afternoon. And I'd also like to ask for continued prayers for Wendy and the family. She's having it pretty hard after losing Dave, and uh, she tries to put on a good face, but I'm the one that can see through it. I'm the mom. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. My prayer this week is uh, very simple. Peace in the world with everybody. Amen. I ask for peace for my friend Debbie, 
whose mother is in very bad shape and she needs all the prayer she can get for acceptance of the situation. And my heart's with her. Thank you. Amen. Bring one? Okay, young man, look at you run. I'd like prayers for my aunt, my father's sister. On Thursday, she went into hospice, and she turns 95 tomorrow. Fortunately, Ann and I got to meet her when we were up in Ohio about six weeks ago. Okay. But appreciate the prayers. Amen. And her name? Janet. Janet. I'd like to ask for prayers for my daughter-in-law. She's now undergoing uh, kidney dialysis. Thank you. Amen. And her name? Carrie. Carrie. Others? Okay. Um, I want to lift up one. Um, I got a notice this week that uh, Bill Fredrickson, Bill and Joan would come and spend the winter with us here faithfully. Uh, he was quite a gentleman. He was a retired state trooper in Connecticut or Rhode Island. I'm not sure, but they live in Connecticut. I spoke to Joan this week, so Bill is in a better place. Bill passed on, and he's now with the Lord. Uh, but I want to lift up Joan and her family as they mourn the loss of Bill. Um, let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we list up joyously all the things that we thank you for and all those things named today, the wonderful healings and the blessings of being with family and all the other ways in you bless us. But Lord, we also lift up for your care and your tending to these concerns, these different people that are struggling with illness and loss, and we ask that you be with them and comfort them. Lord, we thank you for all good things, and we turn all the troubles of the world to you, but we ask that you make us agents of your change through all that we do. We pray all this always confident and trusting in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and let the people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for your help this morning. Everyone could stand as able.
trying to figure out whose voice it was to, said to tell us to stand up because that's my chance to sit down and take a break between <laughs> these two parts of the worship. And then I realized it was probably on the recording already. So. Yes, sir, it was. That was actually Carl Uncle, who used to be a member of our church. Uh, and that was recorded back in 2014. Well, <sighs> let us pray the offering prayer. It's one voice. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels and the church of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
on his last night, right before he would suffer betrayal and torture, he took the bread when he was gathered with his closest disciples. And he took the bread and he lifted up and he gave thanks. And he offered it to all, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Do, given for you, do this for the forgiveness of sin. After supper, he then took the cup and he held it up and he said, In this cup is my blood and it will be poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Not just here tonight, but for all time, for all people. Do this as often as you do it, remembering me. Amen. Amen. Well, then let's say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Then lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As one beggar telling a bunch of other beggars, here is bread for the world, come and eat. All are welcome at this table. You can take communion in three ways. You can, as the usher invites you forward, you'll be handed a piece of bread and you can then dip or intinct into either cup. The dark liquid is wine, the light liquid is grape juice. If you're worried about germs and COVID is on the rise, I'm hearing more and more cases of it. If you're concerned, that's perfectly fine. I've sanitized my hands, but there are individual elements back there that you can go back and receive that way. If you're not able to come forward for whatever reason, I will, near the end when the distribution is just about done, if I'll ask if there's anyone else, simply raise your hand and we will come to you because God always first comes to us. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Oh 
Let us pray the prayer after communion as one voice. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. And the blessing of God, who provides for us feeds us and journeys with us. Be upon you now and forever. Amen. Peace, you are the body of Christ.